This video is part two on how to build a barn door. And the best part is you can build this door in less than two weekends. That's a joke, isn't it? No, I'm pretty serious. And as a bonus, I'm offering DIY plans on this barn door build. And with the discount code that I'm offering somewhere in this video, you can get them for $1. So let's get this started. What is going on? My name is Donnie and welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to make cool stuff like this barn door, then be sure to click the subscribe button below and don't forget to turn on the bell so you'll be notified every time I drop a new video. Previously on How to Build a Barn Door, Part 1. Start your woodworking journey, there's always a particular project that a light bulb goes off and you're like, man, I finally got these things figured out. And that was making doors for me. It's like somebody got a name, Woodshock. <laughs> now that we're all caught up, here's the barn door today. We'll be applying the finish coats and drilling the holes and installing the hardware. About to begin drilling holes into the door, so I want to elevate it off the table slightly. So I'm going to put a couple of riser blocks and just elevate it a couple inches. Here's the pool that I'm going to be using. It's really thick and stout, and I'll have a link for it below in the description box if you're interested. This video is made possible by my sponsor, True Position Tools. Let's go over a few details about this tool and what makes it so unique. The kit comes with two extension bars that can be used to drill out large cabinet doors or shelf pin holes. The jig itself is made from hardened aluminum. The T-square vertically has a large stop block with a stainless steel thumb screw. In addition to that, it has two sliding drill guides horizontally with locking screws as well. Let's install the hardware. I figured out that it was seven inches on center, so all I had to do was move my two sliding drill holes over to three and a half inches each, which would make seven inches. After adjusting the jig so I could drill the holes on center of the door frame, I tightened the nut and I moved on to clamping a sacrificial board so I wouldn't have any blowout on the opposite side of the door. Then it's easy peasy. Just drill the hole and get going. Stay tuned to the end so you can see the final reveal of the barn door and the install in the client's home. What a lifesaver this jig is. I used to fumble around with these other plastic jigs and measuring things out, and my holes would be a little off-centered, and it drove me crazy. With this tool, I'm always perfectly on point, and it's precise. So installing this hardware right now is super easy, and I'm just doing a simple dry fit test. It works, it's square, and I'm digging it. Woo, it's hot in here, guys. So damn hot. It's like 110 degrees with the heat index. I'm melting, literally. Uh, but stay with me. So we just finished installing the hardware, the pool for the sliding barn door using the True Positions jig. Now traditionally this jig is meant for handles, doorknobs, pools, uh, shelf pin holes on cabinets. It's really amazing, it's superior in quality and I absolutely love it and it's been a game changer for me in my shop. Let's prep the top. We're going to get ready to install the top hardware for the sliding track take your measurement and then double check it. You never want to be off. So grabbing the extension points, I'm going to apply them to the jig, screw them down and tighten them. Then I'm just going to place the jig on center where I want it to be and then I'm going to clamp it down and prepare to drill my first set of holes. My first set of holes are drilled perfectly. Now it's time to adjust the tool again. The second set of holes need to be five and nine sixteenths down, so I just quickly measured it, tightened the knob, and got to drilling again. Here is the sliding track hardware that we will be installing. Now these screws are a half inch, and the bit that comes with the True Positions tool is actually a quarter inch. So off camera I had to take a half inch bit and drill through the holes, but it was easy because I already had my pilot hole for the quarter inch done. So that was no sweat. I tightened them down and they fit perfectly and they're square. The holes are complete, hardware installed, and it's time to move on to the next step. Whew, that was easy, but we got it done. 
covered. We're now gonna stain the door, apply finish, and then I'm gonna take you to the client's house where we're gonna install this with a ledger board on the wall and actually put it in its place. And I'm gonna be using this fancy little roller wheel at the bottom of the door so it stays in the track with a fluid movement. Stay tuned for that, guys, and let's get going. I'm applying a couple of coats of stain. I'm not applying any type of sanding sealer as this is supposed to be a rustic door. So we want it kind of splotchy and rustic and to help with that aged look. After waiting three hours for the finish to completely cure out, I moved on to the next step, which is going to be spraying the finish coat on it. But first, let's go ahead and screw down a couple of sacrificial blocks to the bottom of this door so we can stand it up. And this way I can spray both sides at the same time and it's just much smarter this way and much more efficient. This door is going to get a total of three coats. I'm using a polyurethane water base and I'm spraying three coats to the front and three coats to the back. After all my coats, I let the door cure for approximately 12 hours. I moved it over to my table and unzipped the temporary boards on the bottom. Using 1500 grit sanding sponge, I went over the entire door, top and bottom, and got it nice and smooth to touch. Then I applied two coats of furniture wax, allowing 20 minutes in between each coat to really set up. Then I grabbed a clean cloth. And I just really buffed and did a little elbow sweat front and back of the door just so you could get it nice and clean. It feels amazing to the touch and it's time to reinstall the hardware back on the door. Okay, we got that complete. Let's go take it to the client's house, load up, get going. After a 20 minute drive, we arrived at the client's house. They have a beautiful landscape and to my surprise, they had this really cool fountain that was really tranquil and I really enjoyed listening to it. But let's load up, take the tools inside, and get going on this door. Installing barn doors is a pretty straightforward process once you know the steps. Let's begin with the stud finder and mark out where all our studs are above the door. Once we have that in place, grab your ledger board and an 18 gauge brad nailer and fasten it temporarily. Then drill quarter inch holes where all the studs are and fasten them using lag bolts or lag screws. I stopped using lag bolts about a year ago after I stumbled onto these lag screws. Man, do they make a difference. And look at this ledger board. It looks clean and perfect. Next, install your sliding hardware. Pretty much the same process. Every fastener is 16 inches on center, but once you get it in place, go ahead and hang your door. Then test it and make sure it slides back and forth. Mine went really well, but I did have to make a couple of adjustments and then it was easy peasy. It has these two sliding end caps that lock into place so the door can't slide off the track. And then it has this really fancy roller wheel at the bottom of the door that you attach to the baseboard, which just keeps the door in track and keeps a fluid movement when it slides back and forth. And boom, we did it. The barn door is installed, it looks awesome, and it's just a really fun build. And remember guys, like I said before, if you want plans on how to build this DIY barn door, Click the description box below and I'll have a link in there for you. This video is a wrap. I had a blast making this door, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And just for fun, here are a few other items that I did for the same client. I made this bath caddy out of reclaimed white oak. I filled some parts in with resin and dye. It's a really cool look. And in addition to this, I also installed this fireplace mantle made of 300-year-old reclaimed white oak. It was awesome. But guys, stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Woo, we did it, it's complete. It wasn't that bad, right? This build can be completed in only two weekends, guys, short and easy, but you're gonna need to grab the DIY plans below. And if you missed part one on how to build a barn door, I'll have that queued up for you somewhere over here. But the most important thing is don't forget to subscribe, help a brother out. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Peace.